everyone. Uh, well, this is the end of our session, one whole day session today about Big Blue Day 2020 by Blue Hope, uh, Sabah, and also uh, amazing platform, Adex Pixel, that are supporting us uh, all the way today. So with um, awesome, I can say awesome moderator, Bertie, um, Nora, of course, Paul, uh, Mr. Paul Rose that uh, standing by with us. Uh, this session has been, how to say, is so, so valuable for us. And we discuss uh, many strong point and very, uh, very good point, very useful for all of us. And um, uh, also for our Blue Hope and people around the world. And we managed to touch about the Blue Hope Sharks uh, with uh, David McGoy. That's the uh, a session that I really love and very, very uh, insightful. And a lot of information we, we managed to share during the session. And the second session was about the fish bomb free Saba. And this is one of our big M as well uh, in, in Borneo Saba. The third session was uh, about uh, together we eradicate trash. Everyone know that the plastic pollution in Borneo, not only in Borneo, but uh, around the world is so tremendously seriously need the attention. And we, we managed to discuss uh, during this panel very fruitfully. So we hope uh, next year will be a, a, another amazing 2021 um, year for all of us to kick, uh, kick off this session. So the next one was, uh, we were celebrating a special session for Scuba Junkie. We were celebrating the awards that, um, um, for me, I feel like, wow, I didn't expect that they, they won that, uh, that huge award. Um, it's pretty good for, um, to showcase and to encourage and inspire all the uh, scuba dive, uh, resort dive shop around uh, Asia as well. So... How to say it's so amazing for me it's so amazing session and the um a second last session was about rewild apps that um a lot of uh, technical um, terms they use but uh, this one is a uh, pretty promising and um this app's gonna gonna create a um, circular economy and um the point is um, every single plastic will be very valuable, variable in the in future. So this, this uh, topic is really, uh, really, uh, how to say, really intense and uh, important for us as well. And the last session was about the Plastic Ocean, uh, Plastic Detective um, Education and Awareness Program, and our Water Solution by Fonto de Vivo. We're gonna roll out this uh, not only in Sabah in Borneo, but um, finger crossed. Hopefully, will be rolled out in uh, Southeast Asia as well. So, yeah, um, thank you so much for all the panelists, uh, speaker as well that are making your time uh, joining us, Blue Hope, uh, for the Big Blue Day in today, 12th of December, 2020. And of course, thank you so much, Edex. Thank you, John. Thank you all the awesome. Uh, how to say amazing team of edX behind all this uh, uh, all uh, to behind this today's success uh, uh, webinar so thank you so much i'm i'm so grateful and uh, i don't know how to how much thank you i should mention but thank you so much thank you and thanks for everyone around the world and i would like to say merry christmas and happy new year if there is no webinar um coming soon and i want to take this opportunity to wish everyone around the world stay safe stay healthy merry christmas uh, and happy new year thank you over to you simon thank you so much yes thank you thank you mon um i think i think what we've done today is very uh, very meaningful it's the end of the year it's the third and final um digital splash we've done uh it's very special that's very important day for the climate um, about 70 different uh, countries in London now discussing it as we speak. They've just started. And um, so our story here is very important because we're, we are a very precious uh, story from the most biodiverse uh, part of the world. Uh, and the platform is a group of 
uh, most committed believers, ocean lovers, nature lovers. Uh, the the ADEX platform is, is very, very important to us. And uh, we're delighted to be sharing this, uh, hopefully with, um, with uh, Graham Gawley's platform, the uh, dive, dive in the UK and geographical. Um, so this is a truly global discussion. It will be shared east meets west. And um, it's a perfect end to the year as we roll into UNESCO Ocean Decade, which is uh, the next decade of listening to ocean, uh, understanding ocean, and starting to protect ocean properly. Um, so with that said, we have um, three films to show, uh, which we'll play straight after this. Uh, one is the Plastic Oceans UK series, a uh, little short series produced by Plastic Oceans UK, um, our core partner uh, in the UK, Joe Ruxton, um, one of the, one of the, the first, uh, first absolute um, active, passionate uh, campaigners uh, talking about plastics, the perils of plastic pollution. And um, so we're delighted to be rolling this out in Malaysia, the first country in the Coral Triangle. We're planning to roll it out in the other countries in the Coral Triangle next year. Um, so this, this series, um, the uh, Malay series is narrated by Maya Karin. Thank you so much, Maya, for your support. Um, this is very close to your heart, I know. We put a lot of time and energy into producing this series. We could have just put it, press play, but we kept doing it back better and better because you wanted to make it the best. So we'll be playing that for three-part series. Our ocean, um, plastic, what is plastic, and plastic pollution, featuring none other than Sir David Attenborough. And it's very important that as many people see this as possible. And that's what we'll be rolling out. So this is the Malay series that we'll be playing first. Five minutes, five minutes, and then nine minutes. And then we go to uh, virtual reality Cipran, which is a very special film, seven minutes long. Virtual reality is produced by um, Jack Adams, um, who's an actual guru in um, a film cinematographer um, who, who was here with us for a while in, in uh, Sabah and then now based in Singapore. And he's leading the charge with virtual reality and this is his take on Cipran. It's the most uh, special film, really, well, as close to going diving as you can get without actually getting wet. And so that will play next. And the final film, uh, close, a film very close to my heart, um, from, from the, the absolute frontier of biodiversity, the last bastion, Timor-Leste, uh, where they have blue whales swimming past their capital city, the gongs right outside the, the international airport, uh, the, the, the newest, the smallest, and of course, the poorest country in the Coral Triangle, all six countries. And they are really punching above their weight in terms of how they're tackling plastic. And they launched Timor Leste Plastic Neutral uh, last year. And um, Dimitro, um, the uh, Secretary of State for the Environment, Brigadier, um, uh, 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 and they are really in that. And we're kickstarting a really big museum. So, with that said, um, thank you very much, ADEX. Thank you very much, John. Uh, you've got an amazing team. Uh, certainly couldn't have done it without you. Thank you much. Uh, thank you, everyone, for, for listening. And I will see you again early next year. Um, have a great Christmas, Happy New Year, and take care. Be safe. Thanks All right. For so before, what? yeah, before we share, thank you so much, uh, Simon. So before we see the movie, before we see the uh, video, uh, let's have uh, John to say something to all of us around the thank world. Thank you, Monica. Thank you, yeah. Monica. Thank you, Simon. Um, I'd like to thanks to, uh, especially, I'd like to thanks to uh, the two team behind this this today event, uh, Blue Hope, Simon, Monica, and the team. And, and Ada's team uh, is my team that is uh, really working hard to put up this event to make things happen in, in the before the uh, end of the year. I'm, uh, I'm uh, very happy to be here. Uh, uh, we, we are working together for this blue days that we celebrate the ocean, especially on the, we've got the especially on the, especially this year. This is the, the, the best way to, to celebrate in the ocean in the uh, uh, before the uh, year ends, uh, I think this Blue Hole and ADEX, this event, 
we'll, we'll be um, looking forward more for the next year and this year. Today will be uh, the, the, the last last day for this year to, to presenting this with the, uh, that end with the uh, amazing two, uh, three films that we are going to show. Hopefully every ocean lover will like it. Or if you are, if you are not yet attached to ocean, you will be uh, inspired and that is what we want to do and this is what we want more people to inspire on that. So, and blue is very important for all of us. 60% of air that we breathe is all come from ocean. So if we care about green, we care about the blue. And also the, uh, um, I mean, this week we celebrate the uh, earlier on with the green days, following up with the uh, blue day that is a, uh, come along with the blue hope that they, they want to create this blue day together. I'm very happy to work together, to put it together with the two team. And that was an amazing result to see. I'm looking forward to see the, the, the three planes. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much, John. And okay. yeah, it, it's been amazing. We all of us uh, are connected to the ocean. We connected to the blue and our body is contained a lot of water. So we live in the blue. Like John said, if you're not if you're not inspired yet, uh, we will do more. And I'm sure a lot of our show, a lot of uh, this, I, I'm sure this video will truly inspire you. And then not to forget before we continue for the video, not to forget if you haven't watched the, the movie called Life on Our Planet by Sir David Attenborough, please do that. And for myself, you must watch it. You must, must, must watch it. Okay. So, and thank you so much. Uh, we yeah. forgot. Uh, we not to forget um, our Mr. Charles Hare, uh, British uh, ambassador, and as well as um, the French ambassador that are giving us a very amazing and super, super, super positive uh, message. Although he can't make it here with us uh, today's uh, webinar. So, yeah. With that then, thank you so much, everyone. Once again, thank you, edX. Thank you, all the team. And without edX, we can't make a webinar, an amazing webinar like today. Thank you so much, edX. Thank you, John, and the team. Thank you, and bye. Thank Enjoy you. the thank movie. Hello, my name is David Attenborough and I'm a naturalist and a natural history filmmaker. Over the last 65 years, I've been very privileged to travel the world and see every environment from the ocean to the jungle. We're now facing a range of extremely challenging environmental problems. But one of the most pressing issues of our times is plastic pollution. While plastic now affects the entire planet, it's our oceans that bear the full brunt of plastic pollution. What's so tragic about plastic pollution is that it is so totally unnecessary. The plastic in our oceans should never have found its way there in the first place. And yet, a staggering eight million tons of plastic now ends up in our oceans every year, causing untold harm to marine wildlife. Blue Planet 2's crew saw plastic everywhere they filmed. But this catastrophic damage to our oceans is reversible and nature can recover if we give it a chance. While the actions of just one of us, you, may seem to be so very small with really no effect at all, in fact, knowing there are hundreds of thousands of people all doing the same thing is starting to have a truly positive effect. Every single one of us now needs to think, and I mean really think, about how we use plastic. So, I strongly urge you all to treat plastic with care, because if it reaches the environment, it will stay there for a very long time, if not forever, and ultimately affect us all.
every one of us should be extremely proud of their natural heritage and passionate to protect and conserve it and ensure that it remains around for future generations. We all have a responsibility to care for our planet. The future of humanity and indeed all life on Earth now depends on us. Thank you very much and good luck. When I was a boy, I remember very vividly um, uh, uh, my teacher at school telling, us, telling the school that a new era had dawned, uh, that suddenly this marvellous new substance called plastic had been invented. And it was light and it was cheap and it could be used for a multitude of things. And though so that in centuries to come, you'll go back on the 20th century and say that was plastic period. He was truer than he knew. Because although it was all those advantages, the, the, the mere fact that it was indestructible meant that it was could not be thrown away. Plastic manufacturers happily said, once, once you've used this, throw it away, discard it. There is no away because plastic is so permanent and so indestructible that when you cast it into the ocean, or indeed into your dustbin, it does not go away. Jadi apa sebenarnya plastik? Biasanya plastik adalah polimer organik, iaitu rangkaian panjang jisim bermolekul tinggi yang sukar dipisahkan. Hampir semua plastik diperbuat daripada minyak dan bahan api fosil. 8% keluaran minyak global adalah untuk menghasilkan plastik. Kebanyakan pepejal berubah bentuk apabila mengalami perubahan daya atau suhu. Ini dikenali sebagai keplastikan. Polimer-polimer mudah bentuk yang memiliki sifat ini dinamakan sebagai plastik. Plastik boleh dibahagikan kepada tujuh jenis yang berbeza. Setiap jenis mempunyai perbezaan pada struktur dan kualiti. Bahan kimia yang dipanggil aditif memberi sifat-sifat tertentu kepada plastik. Aditif ini termasuk bahan tahan api, dioksin, BPA dan bahan kimia lain yang boleh meresap keluar dari plastik mencemarkan udara, tanah dan air. Aditif juga menyerap ke dalam makanan dan minuman yang dibungkus dengan plastik. Ada di antara bahan kimia ini menjejaskan kesihatan manusia, penyebab kepada barah dan gangguan endokrin. Kajian telah menunjukkan ia mempengaruhi kesuburan dan mengganggu perkembangan kanak-kanak. Plastik sangat stabil, boleh dibentuk, tahan lama dan senang dibersihkan. Ini menjadikannya bahan yang amat berguna. Ia memberi manfaat besar kepada profesion perubatan sebagai bahan yang murah, kuat dan mudah disterilkan dan sangat senang dibuang. Dan disitulah masalah plastik bermula. Ini kerana plastik tidak mengurai seperti bahan biodegradasi. Ketahanannya itu adalah aset terbesar pada plastik. Tapi ia juga punca menjadi masalah yang besar pada alam sekitar. Bila plastik dibuang, ia tidak akan hilang begitu sahaja. Ia akan pecah menjadi cebisan-cebisan kecil. Dan cebisan itu terus kekal untuk tempoh masa yang sangat lama. Ada plastik yang dibuat lebih 70 tahun yang lalu masih ada lagi hari ini di tapak pelupusan sampah dan lautan kita. Setelah plastik dihasilkan, ia sukar dilupuskan jika tidak ditangani dengan betul. Bila plastik sampai di lautan, sinaran UV matahari dan air masin akan menjadikan ia rapuh. 
Bila dihempas ombak laut, barangan plastik akan pecah menjadi cebisan-cebisan kecil. Akhirnya, ia akan menjadi mikroplastik. Dengan diameter berukuran tidak sampai 5 mm, cebisan mikroplastik yang banyak ini meresap masuk ke dalam rantaian makanan laut dan memberi ancaman yang serius kepada manusia dan hidupan laut. Plastik itu sendiri bukan suatu masalah, tetapi sikap kita yang menggunakannya yang menjadikan ia bahan yang bermasalah. Kita perlu ubah sikap suka membuang sampah dan kita boleh mula mengurangkan penggunaan plastik dalam kehidupan seharian kita. Kita juga perlu berhenti menghasilkan produk plastik sekali guna dan pastikan bila kita menggunakannya, kita ada sebab yang baik. Kita perlukan reka bentuk dan pengeluaran yang lebih baik supaya plastik boleh diguna semula dengan mudah dan dapat dikita semula. Lebih baik jika ia dikita ubah kerana plastik hanya boleh dikita semula beberapa kali sahaja. Maka mengitar ubah menjadi produk yang bukan untuk sekali guna adalah cara yang lebih baik untuk barangan plastik terbuang masuk semula ke dalam kitaran ekonomi. Ini akan pastikan apa saja plastik yang kita gunakan tidak akan berakhir di lautan. the importance of the oceans. They provide us with more than half the oxygen we need. Every second breath you take comes from the oceans. They absorb much of the carbon dioxide we produce. They are an important source of protein for billions of people on the planet. Every drop of water, indeed everything we drink, has come from the oceans. The ocean is our life support system. If that system becomes dysfunctional, then all living things on this planet will suffer. Bila anda lihat bumi dari angkasa, anda akan tahu kenapa ia dipanggil planet biru. 71% permukaan bumi diliputi oleh lautan dan lautan amat penting untuk semua makhluk hidup. Tarik nafas dua kali. Oksigen yang anda seduk dalam salah satu nafas itu datang dari lautan kerana lebih separuh daripada oksigen bumi dihasilkan di lautan. Ini disebabkan oleh organisma mikroskopik yang dikenali sebagai fitoplankton. Setiap hari, berbilion tumbuhan kecil ini, alga dan bakteria hasilkan oksigen melalui fotosintesis dan melepaskannya ke atmosfera. Fitoplankton juga menyerap karbon dioksida yang membantu mengatur iklim kita. Mereka adalah asas kepada jaringan makanan laut, sumber makanan kepada semua dari sekecil zooplankton sehingga sebesar ikan paus. Mereka mungkin antara organisma terkecil di lautan, tetapi fitoplankton menggalas salah satu tugas terbesar di planet ini. Kehidupan bermula di lautan lebih 3 bilion tahun yang lalu. Hari ini, jutaan spesies tinggal di sana. Ianya biodiversiti yang luar biasa dihubungkan oleh rantaian makanan pemangsa yang mengagumkan dan hubungan yang saling berkait. Jaringan makanan di laut tidak terhad pada persekitaran marine. Hidupan liar pesisir pantai dan berbilion manusia di planet ini juga bergantung padanya sebagai sumber makanan yang penting. Bagi sebilangan negara membangun di dunia, lautan membekalkan sumber protein yang utama.
Ramai orang menganggap lautan adalah tempat yang istimewa. Kita mencari laut untuk hobi dan percutian kita, untuk berehat, untuk bermain dan terukainya. Kita tertarik kepada keindahan dan kehebatannya. Ramai orang sedar dengan hanya duduk dan pandang ke lautan boleh buat mereka rasa lebih segar. Ia menenangkan dan menambah semangat kita. Ia mengingatkan bahawa kita hidup di dunia yang indah. Tahukah anda tiada air baru dihasilkan di bumi? Jumlah air yang sama berkitar sentiasa, menyejat dari lautan hingga membentuk awan. Hujan yang turun dari awan sebagai air tawar akan kembali lagi ke lautan. Kitaran ini adalah gelung tertutup yang telah wujud berbilion tahun lamanya. Kebanyakan haiwan dan tumbuhan perlu air untuk hidup. Tanpa air tawar yang disediakan oleh lautan, kehidupan di darat tidak akan mampu untuk wujud, termasuklah manusia. 60% dari badan kita adalah air. Air yang datang dari lautan. Air adalah kehidupan. Kesejahteraan lautan amat penting untuk hidupan di bumi. Tanpa persekitaran marin yang sihat, kita tidak akan ada planet yang sihat. Dan itu akan menjejaskan kita semua. Menjaga kesihatan laut kita adalah cabaran penting bagi generasi kita. Kita semua perlu melibatkan diri untuk diri kita, rakan dan keluarga kita. Dan untuk setiap makhluk hidup yang berkongsi planet ini dengan kita. extraordinary how um, limited we have been in the past. Uh, after all, it's only 150 years ago that we were pouring raw sewage into the oceans. Uh, why? Because we thought, well, the oceans are infinitely large, uh, so that well, the towns of effluence can just disperse and disappear. Well, now, actually, that's almost true as far as natural sewage is concerned. But it is not true as far as plastic is concerned. Plastic does not degrade. Plastic does not disappear. The processes of nature which deal with effluent uh, do not deal with plastic. Sejak 60 hingga 70 tahun yang lalu, kita telah menghasilkan lebih kurang 8.3 bilion tan plastik. Jumlah yang sangat besar untuk kita cuba gambarkan. Ia lebih kurang sebesar 25 juta jet jumbo. Kira-kira 6.3 bilion tan daripada plastik itu telah menjadi sampah. Dan hanya 9% daripada sampah tersebut yang dikita semula. Apa terjadi kepada yang lain? Sebahagian besarnya dibuang ke tapak pelupusan sampah. Tapi ada yang berjaya memasuki alam sekitar kita. Sisa plastik ini telah masuk ke lautan kita melalui beberapa laluan yang berbeza. Contohnya melalui sistem saliran dan sungai, melalui tempat pembuangan sampah atau tiupan angin. Lautan kita sekarang telah tercemar dengan plastik. Sisa yang terapung dan boleh dilihat tidak menunjukkan skala sebenar kepada masalah pencemaran laut kerana 90% plastik selalunya akan tenggelam. Satu per tiga daripada plastik akan berakhir sebagai pencemaran di alam sekitar dengan jumlah 100 juta tan setiap tahun. 
ianya bersamaan dengan berat 700 bilion botol plastik. Sikap kita yang suka membuang plastik telah menimbulkan masalah alam sekitar dengan kesan jangka panjang. Hari ini, plastik telah mencemarkan setiap sudut lautan bumi ini dari Antartika hingga ke dalam jurang Mariana. Cebisan plastik yang besar di lautan boleh memerangkap lalu mencederakan burung dan hidupan laut. Mereka boleh membawa cebisan plastik ini untuk tempoh yang lama. Bila terperangkap, hampir mustahil untuk mereka melepaskan diri. Kecederaan yang dialami menyakitkan dan sering membawa maut. Burung dan hidupan laut sering menelan cebisan plastik kerana menyangka itu adalah makanan. Oleh sebab plastik tidak boleh diurai, perut mereka tidak boleh mencerna plastik tersebut. Ia akan terus terperangkap dalam sistem penghadaman mereka sehingga mereka mati. Cebisan plastik yang telah ditelan boleh mengekat sistem penghadaman haiwan. Ini akan menyebabkan mereka mati kelaparan. Seekor anak paus bruda mati setelah menelan cebisan plastik bersaiz 6 meter persegi dan kesemua tujuh spesies penyu didapati menelan plastik. Sisa plastik membunuh hidupan marine kita. Sinar UV matahari dan garam pada air laut merapuhkan plastik. Dipukul ombak laut, cebisan plastik mulai pecah dan menghasilkan serpihan-serpihan yang tajam. Lekukan pada serpihan itu akan menangkap zarah-zarah kimia yang masuk ke lautan akibat dari aliran sisa perindustrian dan pertanian yang telah berlaku puluhan tahun. Zarah-zarah yang menumpang pada serpihan plastik akan menjadi pil yang beracun. Toksin dari pil-pil plastik yang telah ditelan oleh burung dan hidupan laut itu memberi ancaman terhadap badan mereka. Mikroplastik adalah cebisan plastik yang berdiameter kurang daripada 5 mm. Ia berasal daripada dua sumber utama. Mikroplastik primer merangkumi gentian mikro daripada pakaian dan habuk getah daripada tayar. Sebilangan besar kain pakaian moden dihasilkan daripada plastik. Setiap kali kita mencuci bahan sintetik ini, jutaan serat plastik masuk ke sistem air daripada mesin basuh kita. Serat plastik ini terlalu kecil untuk diperangkap oleh penapis di loji pemprosesan air dan akhirnya masuk ke lautan. Geseran antara tayar dan permukaan jalan menyebabkan zarah-zarah getah pecah dan apabila hujan, mikroplastik itu mengalir dari jalan raya ke parit dan laluan air. Sekali lagi memulakan perjalanan ke lautan. Mikroplastik sekunder berpunca daripada sisa plastik yang diurai berulang kali sehingga menjadi mikroplastik. Saintis mendapati banyak hidupan laut di seluruh dunia sedang menelan mikroplastik. Ancaman yang tidak dapat dilihat ini telah menyusup ke jaringan makanan di lautan pada pelbagai tahap. Daripada sekecil zooplankton sehingga ikan dan kerang yang kita makan. Baru sekarang kita mulai sedar ancaman mikroplastik terhadap kesihatan laut dan dunia kita. Ada bukti kukuh bahawa pencemaran plastik berlaku di semua lautan kita sekarang ini. 
Sebahagian daripadanya dibawa oleh lima pusaran lautan utama yang merupakan lubuk pusar yang besar yang tercipta daripada putaran arus lautan. Ramai orang bercakap tentang tompok sampah yang terhasil di tengah pusaran ini. Tompok sampah ini bukanlah pulau yang terjadi daripada sisa plastik tetapi ujian air telah menunjukkan kepekatan plastik dan mikroplastik yang tinggi di tengah-tengah setiap pusaran. Setiap plastik mempunyai ketumpatan berbeza, maka ia terapung pada kedalaman berbeza. Pencemaran ini seperti sup plastik keruh yang mengalir melalui lajur air dan bukannya tompok sampah yang terapung di permukaan. Tetapi semua plastik akhirnya akan hilang daya apung sebab itulah kira-kira 90% plastik akhirnya akan tenggelam dan bercampur dengan sedimen di dasar laut. Pencemaran plastik dan kesannya kini tidak boleh diabaikan. Kita lihat ia menjerak dan ditelan oleh burung dan hidupan laut. Kita ada bukti bahawa ia masuk ke rantaian makanan. Kita juga ada bukti bahawa ia menghasilkan sup plastik pada semua aras laut. Dan kita lihat ia terdampar di pantai kita. Kita perlu lebih sedar tentang bahaya yang datang dari pencemaran plastik dan menghalangnya daripada masuk ke lautan kita. Seluruh muka bumi ini bergantung pada lautan yang sehat. We have to act. We have to act now to try and clear up and repair some of the appalling damage that we've made to the ocean. Um, and that is going to retire, require positive action. But there is also much simpler things we can do to prevent it getting much worse. Uh, and that is to make a demand on people who provide or put the plastic into our lives. A, to make that plastic much easier to recycle. And B, not to use it gratuitously. Not to encourage us to put in a, a elaborate packaging to titillate us. And then on the, having done that, to chuck it into the waste paper basket. That's the important thing because it adds cost to the object. Uh, it adds cost to the to the you that you have to pay, but you have to pay a much, much bigger price. And our children will have to pay a much bigger price unless we change our behavior now. There are some places in this modern and connected world that still remain distant. In the vastness of the Celebas Sea, Sipadan stands alone, an underwater mountain rising 600 meters from the depths of the surrounding ocean. Corals have conquered this extinct volcano, hundreds of species coating its surface in a kaleidoscope of color. Sharks still reign supreme Schools of jacks swim lazily in the current. And turtles cruise casually around the reef. My name is Alex Lindblom and I'm an award-winning underwater photographer. And now I am back at world-famous Sipper Dam one of my favorite locations. I'm on assignment for Dive Photo Guide to capture the reefs surrounding this isolated island. During my trip, I'll be staying here, a decommissioned oil rig turned dive resort, known as Sea Ventures, a fittingly iconic structure from which to dive the iconic Sipadan Island. Setting up and checking my camera has become my morning ritual. Underwater at Sipadan, you have to be ready for anything. 
Today, I have my Panasonic GH5 in Nauticam housing, rigged up with both strobes and video lights, allowing me to capture photos and film in a single dive. Sipadan has become one of the most protected marine reserves in the world. Dive resorts used to line its coast, but since 2004, the only way to get there is by boat. A short 30 minute trip from Sea Ventures. Only 120 divers are allowed onto the island each day to reduce diver pressure on the coral reefs. And on this beautiful morning, I am fortunate enough to be one of them. At Sipadan, you can take your pick of photographic subjects. They are everywhere. Sharks swim around you. Turtles, unperturbed by my presence, laze around the reef, even taking naps in plain sight, without a care in the world. Schools of giant bumphead parrotfish storm around the shallows in search of their next crunchy coral meal. And when thousands of jackfish surge past, you can't help but realize you're in a special place. Swimming underneath the jacks as they block out the sun, it's possible to get awe-inspiring silhouettes. Each dive at Sipadan is a surprise. As soon as I climb out, all I want to do is swap tanks and plunge back down beneath the waves. Wide angle or macro, there is something for everyone here and it's because of the island's protection. Reserves like Sipadan are an example of how protection can and should be done, allowing us to come back time and again to enjoy its reefs. The life here is staggering and a must for all underwater photographers. I'm Sylvia Earle. I'm an ocean explorer, a scientist, and founder of Mission Blue. I want to salute you for what you are doing in Timor-Leste, for celebrating your ocean, taking care of your ocean, and sharing it with people from all over the world. With hundreds of blue whales swimming past Dili every year, families of sperm whales and many different species of dolphins so close to shore, and dugongs just five minutes away from the international airport, you have the most extraordinary and precious blue world in your hands. Truly incredible. Thank you for what you're doing. Tourism actually serves as a powerful education, causing people to be aware of why they matter, why the ocean matters. Timor-Leste is, of course, also blessed with tremendous oil and gas reserves. And while there's absolutely no doubt in my mind that your whales, dolphins, and dugongs are much more precious, their combined value must be realized and shared across all the different marine stakeholders through proper ecotourism as quickly as possible. So, while you have some really big challenges ahead by working very closely together through ATM-TL with multiple stakeholder collaboration and planning, with your combined strength and unity, Timor-Leste's Blue World 
will surely stand out above the rest and get proper protection that it really needs and deserves. I want to assure you that you have mine and Mission Blue's full support, and I very much hope to experience Timor-Leste's amazing blue wonderland myself soon. You truly are reason for hope. Thank you.